The wine is clear. The wine is hazy bright. The wine is opaque. The wine is ruby red to deep red. The wine has medium to high concentration. Medium viscosity. The wine is clean. The wine is youthful. The wine is fresh. Flowers. Spice. Pepper. Leather. Oak. The wine is dry, medium alcohol, medium plus acidity, medium plus tannin, medium plus complexity, long finish. The wine is Syrah, Old World, French, Rhone region, Northern Rhone, Hermitage. <laughs> okay, what was all that about? And hey there, winos, this is Vince.Wine, and today I'm gonna be covering the deductive tasting method. Let's roll the intro and then dive right into it. So on today's How to Wine, I wanted to really go into what it is that certified sommeliers and W sets and other wine experts use to taste wine. And it really does kind of look like my little gag in the beginning of the video. The wine is clear, the wine is clean, the wine is powerful, the wine is all of that stuff because there's just really so much to learn when it comes to wine. And as intense and crazy as it might seem, there is a method to the madness and there's so much revealed when you take such an analytical look at the deductive tasting method. So I just came fresh off doing a collaboration with my friend Stuart over at Wine on the Dime. And I wanna jump into this Syrah, which I opened for a collaboration we did over on his channel. So why don't we join Stuart right now and let him take us through really what the deductive tasting method is. Stuart, take it away. Thanks, fans. Hey, everybody, my name is Stuart. I'm with the Wine on the Dime YouTube channel, and I mostly focus on reviews for bottles $15 and under, and I'm a WSET Level 3 certified, I guess, wine guy. So I'm gonna be talking today about the basics of deductive tasting. So regardless if you're going through, say, the Master Court, or if you're going through WSET or another type of wine study curriculum, you will be introduced to deductive tasting. And essentially what you're doing is you're going to be taking a look at a wine, breaking it down into its structural components to assess quality in the end. In general, there are four things that pretty much every group looks for. You're looking for the appearance, the nose, basically what you smell, the palate, what you taste, and then you perform your assessment of quality. So let's go ahead and get started with the appearance. When you're looking at the appearance of a wine, you wanna hold it about a 30 to 45 degree angle, and you wanna take a look at the intensity of the color. Is it, if it's not very intense, it's probably gonna be pale. If it's really intense, it's gonna be deep. You also wanna take a look at the color. Make note of what that color is, and then you can also swirl it around a little bit and take a look at the legs. That will help give you an indication of the structure of the wine. If it's really like congealed and streaky, then it's probably gonna be higher alcohol than something that's very watery and runs down. That's, there's not much evaporation that's going on there, and that wine's gonna settle back into the glass, so it'll be lower ABV. So that gives you a basic assessment of appearance on a wine. Then you really wanna start moving it around, start smelling it, this moves on to the nose. From here, you wanna kinda of start seeing what you're picking out in the wine. There's primary, secondary, and tertiary characteristics within a wine when you're smelling it and tasting it on the palate. So the primary items are things that are basically fruit. Are you getting pear, are you getting apple, watermelon, cherry, black cherry? All those things are primary elements. Secondary elements are wine making notes. Are you getting like a cheese? Are you getting some sort of like barrel note like almond or vanilla that's coming out into the wine? And then tertiary are things that are a result of aging. Are you getting honey? Are you getting beeswax? Are you getting leather, earth, mushroom? All of those things add to the complexity of the wine. So you really wanna move it around and smell it and get really into it and don't be afraid to stick your nose in deep in order to get those if that's what you need for this wine. Some wines are pretty pronounced. You can get them from pretty far away. Some wines like this Pinot Grigio, I have to kind of get in deep. So don't be afraid to stick schnoz in the glass. Yeah, it smells nice. So let's go ahead and get to the palate, which is the part that most people just try to skip to, but all that other stuff is very important. Make sure you don't skip it before you go to the palate. Move the wine around in every element in your mouth. Breathe in some air. There's this thing called the retronasal effect that allows for air to come back up through the nose. That allows for you to get more in-depth aromatics. Really work on that. All of those things will help you assess it. Go and see if you can try to match the things that you smell in terms of the things that you taste. If you don't, then try to see what's the gap. Do I smell something like gooseberry and I'm not getting it? Or Am I tasting leather and it's not there? All of those things are things you need to look for. 
But on the palate, you also need to go into the body. Does this taste like a full-bodied wine? Is it a light wine? What's the acid like? If it's a red wine, what are the tannins like? How heavy is the alcohol? How long is the finish? All of these things play into the overall palate assessment of the wine. Then that leads you into the final element of deductive tasting, which is the conclusion of quality. Is this wine good? Is this wine bad? Some people have certain preferences, but when you're evaluating it, you need to try to be objective if possible. So some people really like rosés and they would give every rosé a grape. That doesn't mean that the average person who's buying that bottle or grabbing a bottle for their friend is going to think the same thing. So what you want to do is try to take a step back and evaluate it. There's one methodology that I use for that, it's called BLIC which stands for balance, length, intensity, and complexity. So if you have none of those elements, then at that point, you're a bad wine. If you have a combination score of one going on a half point scale, so you can have a half point in balance and a half point in length, then you get a full point, you're an okay wine. Two points is good, three points is very good, and four points, which is rare because it takes a lot to get to four points, is a great wine. So though, that's one basic tool that you can use when you're assessing quality. That should be able to help you out in your deductive tasting practices when you're working with yourself or with your friends. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pitch this back to Vince. Hey Vince, take it away. A lot of great info. Thank you so much, Stuart. That was such a great in-depth look at what this method is. Hey, if you guys wanna see more reviews for wines $15 and under, go check out Stuart at Wine on the Dime. And now to deduce the tasting. So now that we've learned a little bit about how that method works, we're going to put the deductive tasting method to the test on this Syrah. All right, so just taking a first look at this Syrah, we see that the wine is indeed clear. It's not cloudy at all. There's not a lot of artifacts in there. There's no dusting happening in there. It's a pretty clear wine. The wine is, in fact, ruby red. You get this really gorgeous ruby red color. There is no variation on the rim here. It's color all the way to the rim, which means it's not going to be a super old wine. As I turn in my glass here. There's not a whole lot of staining, but we are getting, I want to say just a hint of staining, but not much. This is actually mostly about the legs, which tells us I would say this has about a medium viscosity on it. Again, that's the mouthfeel, that's the body that's in there. The concentration is medium low, I would say. I can see my hand fairly clearly through this. Probably couldn't read like a book through there, but certainly I can see right through it. And again, that tells us a little bit about the body of the wine. On the nose, the wine is clean, no flaws, relatively youthful, not a lot of aged condition of fruit, but more fresh red fruit. Medium intensity, aromas of fresh and a little bit of dried red fruit, a little bit of dried red flower petals. Not a whole lot of black pepper or leather or smoke that typically would get on a Syrah. And sometimes a little bit of black olive can be found on the Syrah as well. This is mostly about the fruit. Let's get it on the palate. Confirming fresh red fruit, confirming some dried fruit as well. And now here comes in that sort of French thing. Oh, I can't say stuff like that. I'm doing deductive tasting. <laughs> okay, that's me sort of explaining. Here comes that sort of French thing happening. You know, that really is one of the reasons why I don't do the deductive tasting on this channel. Even though I do run the wines through in my head with the deductive tasting, it really doesn't tell you guys a whole lot when I say, medium plus acidity, medium plus alcohol, medium plus complexity. Right, those words don't really mean a whole lot to you winos. My whole mission is to make wine accessible for you guys. And that's exactly why I might say something like, whoa, that is an explosion of fresh red fruit, rather than saying something like medium plus intense aromas of sandalwood, right? Like I want to make sure that you guys can connect with what it is that I'm pulling and reaching for in my wine. Having said that, let's jump back into the deductive tasting method just to wrap this up. Okay, the wine has medium plus acidity, great food wine. The wine is dry, medium easy tannin, or excuse me, just medium tannin. Easy is another Vince word. I would say medium to low finish just sort of starts to fall off and about medium complexity. Well, there you have it. That is the deductive tasting method. And you know, you're going to have to master this if you're studying to become a W set like Stuart or a certified sommelier like yours truly. But you know, even if you're not studying to become a wine expert, I totally encourage you winos to study it and see if it can bring you a little bit more understanding and appreciation of wine because at the end of the day, wine is meant to be enjoyed. All right, winos, that's it for me today. If you liked what you saw here, please leave me a like. That helps a lot. Don't forget to go check out Wine on the Dime. I just did a collaboration with him where I actually talked a lot about about Syrah, where it comes from, its history, and he covers some pretty cool Syrahs over on his channel today. I'll see you winos over there. And until next time, drink safe and drink well. 
All right, so there you have it. That is the deductive 